Hanji, welcome to another episode of the Not in the Cloud podcast, and I'm back this week. Hey, <laughs> I missed you guys. This is fun. This is actually really fun recording these. But I have the existential question: What have you guys been consuming, reading, watching this week? Asa, I'm going to start with you because you're smiling. Yeah, yeah. So it's been an exciting weekend. Lots, lots happening. Obviously, with with it being Easter weekend, it was an extended weekend: Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. And Subhaji, Subhas Lekhan Singh, had um, scheduled a program to do an Akhand Varni and Akhand Bhat over the weekend alongside a Mariada camp. Do you just explain what an Akhand Varni is and an Akhand Bhat is to those non Sikh listeners yeah. or just generally? Yeah, what, Akhand what meaning without, without stoppage, so continuous. Uh, Varni is the continuous recit- re- recitation of Naam, uh, which Sadhguru Nanak Devji gave us. Um, Vava being Vishnu, Haha being Hari, Gaga being Gobind, then Rara being Ram. So that continuous recitation over 48 hours. Um, and then Akhand Bhat is a recitation of the entire Guru Granth Sahib Ji uh, over the course of 48 hours without stoppage. Is that one person, one sitting? So it's not one person. So it takes a whole team. So you've got, you know, you've got the Bhattis. I think there's like at least... There was probably ten or fifteen, um, but there was so much enthusiasm to take part. I think they uh, normally are one roll, so roll being a two-hour stint. Um, normally it's two hours, but because there were there were so many people wanting to take part, there were some people that um, only managed to sit down for fifteen minutes. But even oh, that, wow. you know, is a huge honor and a privilege to be able to do that. Um, so yeah, loads of people that you know contribute to making this all happen. You've got langris, sevadars, people staying up all night, uh, making sure that people wake up on time to get to their duty. Um, but yeah, no, it was, it was an incredible experience. Something that's quite unique is that because of the amount of things it takes to do it according to the Navdari Mariada, it's it's quite rare. Like I've only seen an account of part being done in the UK twice. I know it has been done other times when I've been in India, but it's quite a rare occasion for us. So it's always a really good feeling when all the things get together, all the BB get together to to do that seva. Um, I was looking into it and uh, the for us you you can actually you're not even allowed to do the ardas for an part until you have seven sings for doing the part seven sings for doing the tupia di seva tupia is uh, we do a jabji sahib di varni alongside the sri adguru ran sarda part um and they're looking after the Samagri Tuf and they're looking after the Gita. And the Gita is uh, essentially the old school light bulb <laughs> um, that uh, obviously back in the day we didn't have electricity. And obviously that tradition has been maintained up until now, even though we do have that electricity out of respect for that tradition. Um, so that is there. And then you have uh, uh, sayings on Behra as well. So Behra is like essentially your security guards or, or bodyguards to make sure everything is is um, secure cure and then you've got langris as well so apart uh, until all of those things are there you're not even allowed to do the ardas and that was the gone weekend so yeah. what were your roles in the say what did you do joan Singh? what did you partake in <laughs> so i i got the opportunity to um sit in the japji sab divarni so doing the the tufia the role um but then again you know you take seva where you can and so you know, i found myself sometimes in the langar sometimes helping somebody do ashnan um, so this whole Akhand Varni and uh, Akhand Bhat is done in Swadhi Mariada. Um, and such, uh, such and uh, like maintaining such is a key element of, of this Varni. So anybody that's not done Ishnan, for example, Kesi Ishnan, wouldn't be allowed to, to take part. You have to do Kesi Ishnan with, with uh, water that's been collected um, and maintained in a certain way so that it's not, had contact with anybody else or anything else. Um, and and so you sort of, in the mornings especially, you'd get somebody warming up the water for you, um, and making your life a little bit easier. And I think that's been a big experience, especially with, with Juan Singh and I, that we've always experienced so there's being um, a, a facet of love because you do it out of love for somebody else. You, let me try and make their life easier. Um, I remember I, f- I forgot my tooth tabs and I had to I had to borrow some off Juan. Then again, you know, it's that like camaraderie that we've all come together for this one thing. We're here to help and support each other and make um, this experience enjoyable. Yeah. And just to shed some light on that, you're probably thinking what we're talking about, but um, 
when it comes to the water that we use, especially when you're in Saud Muriyada, we're not allowed to use tap water, essentially. So anybody that's uh, used tap water, their shanan is not Burwan for somebody that can sit in the Akhand Bart or Varni or Akhand Varni. Um, there's a place in, I think it's Maidstone in Kent that we go where it's running natural spring water. We take steel drums that have been manged with sand and then covered with materials that doesn't touch anything else, so it's not uh, contaminated. That water is then used to create the Amrit. Uh, all of the things, everybody's done Sodha, Shanan, Kada Prashad Karke, that's also made with Sodha Jal. So every for, for that period of time, we're not using any uh, tap water. And everything's done with uh, as much respect and adab as, as we can do, going back to Guru Hargobin Pashaji's hukum, that somebody that doesn't have adab or respect for Gurbani can never be a sick of mine. Um, so yeah, uh, in that muriyada, you do definitely feel that, that every sing that is getting ready, um, they're not putting any plastic toothbrushes in their mouth, either they're using a bamboo toothbrush or like Baji was saying, we're using powder toothpaste, so you're not even using using any toothpaste that has uh, like any other type of water in there, or you're using datan. Um, I think uh, Santaran Jeet Singh Ji had bought uh, Nim uh, that datan, and, and that was really cool um, for anybody that doesn't have that experience. So I think it was a new experience for a lot of people uh, to actually get that feeling of, oh, what, what would it have been like to be a party um, uh, for, in an account part? Were you on part seva or did you were you on japji sir? Uh, I did a little bit of part. Um, the other aspect was making sure all of the things came at the right time. Doing behra, making sure everything was pura for the kind of part. Uh, anybody that needed, like Baji was saying, anybody that needed to do their shnan. Anybody that wants references to this, I think it, go, it goes back to Mukhtarnama from the Sri uh, Guru Pratap Suraj Granth. I went to India, I mean, via Doha, but I went to India and the experience of going to Brani Sahib after six years was immense for me. I mean, I, when I was there before, it was, I, you know, it became part of a routine and you, I, I can't explain it in words until you actually go there and actually feel it and see it. Because when you go to Brani Sahib, it's a different feeling. It's a very simple life. As soon as you land there, it's almost like it's very modern for a bin life, but it's also very like simple. We definitely felt the same in that you know for that for that weekend it was like the external world didn't really exist. Yeah, and it was just like we were there in that one environment together. Um, and I completely understand what you meant about it being modern but also simple at the same time. Yeah, because you know you're walking around in Bowie. Did you know that actually the first time I found out why we wear Bowie? Did you know why? I'm pretty sure it's probably to do with something like I'm coming, so th like to hear someone Get coming. Out of my way. Yeah. Oh no, I didn't know that. Yeah, that, that makes sense actually. But no, the the reason I got told is apparently the place where it, it pinches there, it says that it reduces calm in your body. Um, and that's oh, the, really? yeah, that's the traditional reason why bowie would be worn. And the other thing, obviously, it keeps your f uh, feet clean. So after you've washed your feet, you don't have to keep washing uh, them over. So karama are pointless then. That's what I was saying. I was like, so karama, like somebody was like, oh, I want the calm, and and everybody started laughing. <laughs> 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 um, but yeah, that's just a joke. Um, I think yeah. the, other, the, other, the, other, the other element, I think, is obviously to keep you grounded, obviously. But yeah, it's more about the wood being connected to the earth instead of it being like rubber or, or leather or all these other materials that are, are considered uh, yeah. not pure. I, I, because when we were in the Lunga, so Grusev was also there with us, Grusev, Dr. Grusev. Oh, um, he was there as well. And it was, it was cool because we bounced like similar feelings of each other in terms of sometimes, you know, you can be in a place and he suffers from hay fever quite badly. And, uh, <laughs> How he did he just, cope in Benny <laughs> He did like a million <laughs> flowers everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> he, he was just like, I've had enough. I'm Being I'm attacked just by nature. He was he was in awe of being in that place mm. and also 
really suffering at the same time and it was just such a <laughs> wicked dichotomy and you can't walk five steps without walking into a plant pot i know a... i know and yeah so we, so we did you, shared did you were you in Sadhguru Balik Singh Ji's langar or, or um did you like did you have a look at the lower langar yeah we were we passed outside obviously when you go around that side you have yeah Sadhguru Pratap Singh Ji, Sadhguru Jigji Singh Ji's uh, original rooms no even the way it's built is original the outside is new so the way yeah. it looks from the outside that's all new mm. Um, yeah. When uh, did you go upstairs as well? Where Mataji's yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you go upstairs, that's where Sagu Hari Singh Ji, Ote Sachapasha Ji, Braj this one, um, yeah. and that's where Mata Pepinder Kaur Ji's uh, room is as well. So when I went to Pani Sab last, every morning after the Asadiwar, I used to just walk to Rangyam because one, you get to stretch your legs, and it's you know walk. it's a, it's a really nice walk, and it's through beautiful fields. Um, so the first day we got there, we got there in the afternoon-ish, about 6 p.m. And um, there was a divan and after that we went and we slept. And then in the morning after the Asa Diwar, I thought, Jalo, let's go to Rangya. And it just didn't happen. It just didn't materialize. I think we went for Langar and then afterwards I think we were just feeling a bit sleepy. So I think we walked around locally and, and maybe caught some sleep. Uh, and then the second day I had the same thing. I was like, Jalo, let's go. It just didn't happen again. I was just thinking, okay, this is this is not right. Third day, and this is now two days before the Midla starts. The third day, we're walking to the um, Langar and we meet Gursev. And I said to Gursev, Chalo, let's go to Ranya together. Yeah. Um, it's a nice walk, stretch our legs. And he goes, yeah, all right, cool. I'm up for it. He goes, I said to him, look, we're just going to go up to our room. I'll put my, put my stuff down um, and then we'll... Uh, we'll meet at the main gate for this time. Yeah. So I messaged him and said, okay, we're at the main gate. So he goes, you know what? You might want to come towards Akal Bunga. So I go, okay, Tika. So we start walking towards Akal Bunga. And Akal Bunga is where Sakru Ram Singh Ji done the Tapasya. The outside of the Akal Bunga bit, they're redoing that area. So it's they're kind of making it a bit more pretty, I guess. Um, so Sakru Ji were giving darshan there. And... Uh, sort of Asa Sevak just done an ishara to us to say just come and follow us because then they started walking and it was just the usual walk and we're walking now we're walking now and I'm like this is Ranya Road I'm pretty sure we're going to end up in Ranya so basically along with Sakriji we were lucky enough to to um, uh, well follow them to Ranya and they wow. took us to Sagar Ram Singh Ji's Prakash Asthan and uh, but it was one incident in Ranya so we've just come out of the Asthan and I think it was either the first house or the second house. I'm not quite sure. But there was a Singh standing there and he was quite tall, quite like built in terms of like, it looked like he he had been gymming. So Sagraji is talking to the Sangha and he's like looking at me and I'm looking at him. And I, I said to him, <laughs> yeah, this I, our eyes met across the garden. Across the Kui. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I said to him, Paji, it looks like that, you know, you, you like going to the gym. <laughs> and he goes, Anji, Anji, yeah, I've, I follow these influences on TikTok. Or, and then I said, oh, Vadia, yeah, could you, like, it's really nice. And then he said to me, I listen to your podcast. And I'm like, <laughs> what? How did you? Like, he goes, I listen to the, the Clouds Wala podcast or he. And I go, Hanji. I go, yeah. It was really nice. His name was Bharat Singh. Um, but he was very supportive. How did you handle the fame? Sort of? uh, really badly, probably. I just wanted to put my lawyer over my head and just <laughs> bury it under the ground. But it was really nice speaking to loads of different people. So that was the first one. That was on like the second or third day. Then afterwards, um, we met a few people along the journey. And I'm really thankful, really grateful to everyone that I met. Uh, I was just reading now that actually the correct number, I said the wrong number, was you need five parties, five two piercings, two langris and two paradars at all times. Um, so you would have extra things, but that's the things that would be there in terms of the duty. And, um, and Sahaguruji would say that somebody that does this part in Mariada is the same as Sava Lak Sadaran part. So Sadaran part, for those who, who maybe have a different word for it, I think it's been commonized as a Saj part in the UK. Baji, I wanted to ask you a question. Hanji. Were you there when uh, Sant Indrajit Singh Ji spoke? Hanji, I was there. The, 
I think the mahal of so the the atmosphere in that hall at that time when Sant Inderjit Singh Ji came, they talked about non duality. If we convert Advait into English, yeah. the word would be non duality. People like that are so rare now um, uh, to talk about such a, uh, a complicated topic and make it simple um, that yeah. you actually feel like you're understanding what they're saying because to talk about non-duality is actually quite difficult. There was dignitaries there on that same day and Satguruji just met them just by like saying Satsrikal and just, you know, the, the usual greeting. But Satsapashaji actually got up off their asan, came off that stage and actually met them and they both like humbly bowed to each other. So Satguruji and Sant Indrajit Singh Ji. And it was such a beautiful moment. It just actually felt, I mean, I was a little bit Biragi at the time as well. It was just, it was such a beautiful feeling. It's just they've got that sparkle in their eyes of somebody that's filled with that love for their creator. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it, it's like some people, they spend their whole life for a status to be known as something. And uh, for yeah. those that know, don't know, they're known as Sant uh, Indraji Singh Jirakabewal. If you search them up, that's how they, that's how they're written everywhere. And the reason why they snatched the mic off of Subhaji is saying, "Stop calling me that." Um, and why? It's because they said only somebody that is a Gristi can say that they have a home. Once you say that I am this, are you not considering me a part of you as well? Um, and and to actually understand that is a very deep thing that they've said. And while they're saying it, Vragine, that yeah. do not mere to see apne vechu menu na sheko. And they're saying, mm. um, mm. meaning that the Saad Sangh is, is what is keeping me alive, is, is what is my life force. The next evening divan was the last evening divan after that. I had the opportunity to speak to such Bashi just after the um, Kirtan had finished. So Balwant Raghi, Balwant Paji had sung two Shabbats. The second Shabbat was Jo Raj De Taka but Sachapashiji, in the first minute of meeting there, uh, meeting with them, they said, "How beautiful is a shabad? pujo duja nadar naave. Who else should I worship? I see no other." So the theme of duality or non-duality has been carried out through the whole Holamala program because coming out of the you know, double-mindedness and the nature of, of this world where, you know, you're especially, so traveling around India, you see it a lot where, you know, in every corner where there is God, it can feel God in the sense of there's a, there's a murti. So in your car, in, in all the taxis, I noted all the taxis that I went in, in Delhi had one Devta or Devi in the car. Um, at the front or the back, but you know, the, everywhere around them is filled with gandagi. So on the floor, there's litter, there's mountains of litter there. There's like, you know, traffic's a mess. People are a mess swearing at each other and all sorts. But how do you live such a, a clean life in an environment that looks like that? So when you do go to Panisa, you understand why you would want to keep the environment clean because it, detracts it sort of yeah it detracts the uh non-duality out and and gives you that single lens single vision so when you talked about going to penny Sahib, you said one of the one of the main reasons people were there was, was for satguruji's darshan and now again to one okay, if you want to do satguruji's darshan then do the darshan of, of the sick why is darshan such a like so when Sadhguru Ram Singh Ji was sent to Rangoon, the Gore did the Gore did Sadhguru Sachpanshi's darshan. That darshan didn't have didn't have any impact on them. So why is it that when you go to Pani Sahib, how what's the difference? Something that resonates with me is when when you listen to Sadhguru Pratap Singh Ji's updesh, and one of the things that they said is when you leave your house to go to the Gurdwara or to go anywhere, and you know. Even if you don't do an ardas, your ichha and what you're feeling and what you're thinking, intention. Um, your intention will materialize. So you will sit there and you you might say, okay, you know, you might do an ardas and say, you know, Sachapachaji, I'd love like your self as Subhaji 
mentioned so many times in their advice, right? I think you've uh, you've uh, encapsulated this. Jeha sadgur kar janiya, teho jeha sukh hoye. Teho sansa mule nahi, pao lae jan koye, nanak ek jod doe murti sabad milaba hoye. In which way you know the Sadhguru or your intentions or your um, your mindset or your perception of the Sadhguru. Deho jeha sukhoi. According to that is the amount of sukh you're going to obtain or the amount of peace or happiness you're going to obtain. But there's no doubt about this, that those that love him truly are very rare. Nanaka ek jod doe murti. That is the same as there being the one jod, meaning the one light, and only the difference is that you are seeing two different forms. Guru Angad Dev Ji was obviously given Guriyai because they became, from Lana, they became Guru Angad Dev Ji. But which Sikh was it that questioned Guru Nanak Dev Ji and, and asked them and said, I've been with you for a lot more time. Mm. Why why didn't I get Guriyai? Uh, I think that there's two versions of it. In yeah. some scenarios, it's by Mardana Ji asking and in some scenarios, it's by Balla Ji asking. Um, the one I remember is where Pai Barlaji asks. And, okay. Uh, and it's a good connection, actually, where Pai Barlaji asks Guru Angad Dev Ji, because Pai Barlaji has been with Sadhguru Ji literally their whole life. Um, yeah. And Guru Angad Dev Sache Pasha Ji, I think, what is it? Is within the last year, uh, bef- uh, within a year, they, they become. It was a short, it was amount, a short of amount of time. time. I don't yeah. know the exact amount of time. Um, so, yeah, forgive me for that. But it, it's essentially not, it, it wasn't even comparable. Yeah, and when uh, Sadhguru Ji gives the Gurgadi to uh, Pai Lerna and makes them Angad, Pai Barla Ji says to Guru Angad Dev Sachi Pasha Ji that uh, I was with Sadhguru Ji my whole life, uh, and now they've made you the Guru. Um, why is this? And Sadhguru Angad Dev Sachi Pasha Ji asks them that how, what do you you realize Guru Nanak Dev Ji as? Like who who are they for you? Mm. And so he replied, and his reply is, for me, they're Puran Sant. And uh, Sadhguru Ji uh, says, Guru Angad Dev Pasha Ji says, you realize them as a Puran Sant, and that's what they've created you. For me, they were a Kalapurak. I think this has been a really cool episode. Asa, did you want to add anything? Because you've been quiet for way too long now. Just the le- I wanted to touch upon that love aspect. Um, for a Sikh, that's everything and I give it, um, to get to that of us have uh, Sachi Preet right? we, we discussed that Shabit Ki Sachi Preet Ham Tum Seo Jori what does Sachi Preet what does true love actually look like Tum Seo Jori Avar Sangatori if, if uh, Guru Angad Dev Ji became the second Nanak it was because for them there was nobody else left and it was Nanak Ki and that's what they became um but I think reflecting on my life, you know, love love bounces from one to the other, and you you have expectations and mm. uh, uh, hopes on on different people in life. or he helped me do this, and one but I help But you forget who the you know the data ek hai. You forget all of that stuff. It's a cheap It's all uh, fragmented across different people isn't it the songbird loves the sun shining in her face and talking about uh, that female energy meeting their husband lord uh, all of their pains are uh, are removed gursik preet guru mokhalag meaning when their guru mm-hmm. when the gursik sees the face of their guru and it, again it says bachare preet khir mukhai the calf loves to uh, have the milk of of their mother hirde big said ke my and the the Mother, uh, upon seeing the mother, the barsha, the the, uh, the bachere, the, uh, on seeing his mother, becomes so happy. Gursek priyad guru mukhalai. That the same way, the gursek, the the way they when they see the guru's face. Do you know what's really interesting is the way that Gurbani has been written in the sense that it's been written from a female perspective, mm. and if you take because there's loads of examples about how um, the Almighty is my husband, Lord, I know, and and I'm separated from him. Um, and if you look at the relationship between a husband and a wife, just as a as a metaphor, in this union of a husband and a wife, if you take, if you take the husband away, a wife 
isn't a wife anymore. It's, she's an individual now, right? Yeah. And even the other way around, where Govinda Pao Bhagat Kapuka, Bhagat Kapuka, meaning mm. it's this it's this game that is 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 happening. Um, what Asapaj is saying is is that there's the wife does not want to be without the husband lord, and the husband lord mm. does not want to be without the their wife. <laughs> it's like this game that is going both ways. Wait, this is a metaphor for a Sikh and a guru. Actually, and that Darshan thing as well, Sarab um, Guru Arjan Dev Ji like we spoke about them being an ashik and, and a lover and they were like a uh, what's the word a hopeless romantic they've lived so far away for so long now from such a bhakti they they don't want they don't want they don't want anything else yeah. that's one line that i i was almost feeling when i was in bani sab because it's been so long since i saw that gurdarbar i mean obviously i'm not the same i don't sit here and and you know think like that but whilst i was there i was just thinking this is phenomenal i mean all my senses were heightened everything around me just felt surreal one of the mornings of the asadiwar a storm came down it was really heavy storm we woke up at 3 and i was like oh another 5 minutes another 5 minutes so i turned the light on just so i didn't fall back asleep properly so i woke up at 3 i'm just snoozing and then the light goes off i'm thinking oh no then i heard wind so basically the electricity had gone and like there was like almost a mini tufan outside and what's the what's the first thing that you think about when there's a tufan outside hot water no Where's my kashara? Because my kashara was drying <laughs> up. <laughs> so I woke up only just to get my kashara. That's the oh. only reason. And Nina afterwards was saying, "You didn't care about hot water, about nothing else, but your kashara flying across Bani Sab." <laughs> <laughs> That's real wealth, isn't it? That's, yeah. If without that. <laughs> oh, I wanted to ask a question because something that I had learned while I was ill during the Khan part and just sitting there and trying to make most of my time. Um, did you know? Uh, how like uh, if i said the name to you bhagat ja or guru ramanand ji um uh, who who was their um like who was their student bhagat kabir ji right yeah but did you know that bhagat tanna ji was also their student as well guru ravidas ji was their student pipa ji was their student kabir ji was their student bhagat sain ji was their student Tulsidas ji was their student. Tanna ji was their student, um, and there was a couple others as well. Um, we'll put it in the chat. Um, but yeah, all of these people that were actually connected to uh, Guru Ramanand ji, which I actually didn't know. Uh, I thought I, I was the same under the same impression as you that it was just Kabir ji, um, but actually it was more than that. Kabir ji is a legend, yeah. man. Like hearing their <laughs> slogs at the end of the oh, campaign. that was amazing, isn't it? Kabir ji's slog and Farid ji's slog always a highlight for me. <laughs> Linked back to that show instead of. ਕਰ ਬੰਦਗੀ ਛਾੜ ਮੈਂ ਮੇਰਾ ਹੈ ਨਾ ਇਟਸ ਇਨ ਦਾ ਸ਼ਬਦ ਰਾਈਟ ਜੋ ਰਾਜ ਦੇ ਤਾ ਕਵਨ ਬੜਾਈ ਯਾ 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 ਕਿ ਐਂਡ ਦੈਟਸ ਦ ਸੋ ਲਾਈਕ ਸੋ ਕਬੀਰ ਜੀ ਸੇਇੰਗ ਇਫ ਯੂ ਡੋਨਟ ਹੈਵ ਦੈਟ ਦਾਵਾ ਕਿ ਇਹ ਚੀਜ਼ ਮੇਰੀ ਆ ਮੇਰਾ ਪੁੱਤਰ ਮੇਰੀ ਪ੍ਰਾਪਰਟੀ ਮੇਰੇ ਪੈਸੇ ਹੈ ਨਾ ਐਂਡ ਦੈਨ ਕਬੀਰ ਜੀ ਸੇਸ ਐਮ ਦੈਟ ਹੰਬਲ ਬੀਇੰਗ ਹੂ ਡਸਨਟ ਡੂ ਦੈਟ ਦੇ ਲੁਕ ਅਪਨ ਦ ਵੈਲਥੀ ਐਂਡ ਦ ਪੋਰ ਐਸ ਦ ਸੇਮ I know as they go for it they are completely carefree. My fun fact of the week is kind of linked to what Asa just said. Okay. But I'm going to ask you guys Then to go you first. Go first. You go first. Oh, okay. Have you guys heard of the word potlatch? Potlatch. No, no, not heard of it. So potlatch, I'll read the the dictionary description here. It's a ceremonial distribution of property and gifts. to affirm or reaffirm social status. So I heard this in a Jordan Peterson and Joe Rogan podcast where uh, Jordan Peterson's describing this and the way he describes it is back in uh I think it was uh 1800s in America, North America, um the wealthy would throw these like banquets and feasts and the bigger they were and the more money they spent the more sort of uh status they had and it was to sh- it, they were respected more not not in the sense that oh it, they've fed everyone and now everyone should be it's because they distributed their wealth that way so they would give gifts they would have these big feasts and it's almost 
you know, it's humbling to think that that philosophy was in different parts of the world because we we've got it with sort of langar and we've also got it with other things why are you laughing asa i'm laughing because it reminded me of the conservative um thingy about trickle down economics <laughs> 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 it's not that is it it probably is probably the same thing <laughs> trickle down economics <laughs> but i just found that interesting so that's my fun fact asa yeah i'm going to send you an image I don't want you to try and say this word and then I will translate this word for you. Kuchi shabishi. Close, close. Kuchi shabishi. That's the word. And I relate to this a lot because I've gained so much weight. And this is why I found it so funny was because when you're not hungry but you can eat because your mouth feels lonely. <laughs> How good is that? Is that actually it is? They have a word for it. <laughs> Oh man, oh, that's brilliant that they have a word. Well, I have a friend, and every time you say to him, "Are you hungry?" he the answer he gives is, "I can eat." <laughs> it's not. That, it's not that you can't eat or you're not hungry. It's like I can, I can eat. eat. <laughs> uh-huh, ji, Juan Singh ji. So I've gone down the TikTok documentary. Rabbit hole. Oh, hey, it was going to happen one day. Jesse Sangit, Jesse Rangit. And uh, did you know that millipedes, they on their skin they have a certain type of poison, and lemurs, people who had observed that lemurs pick them up. and they would put them in their mouths lick them and put them back down and rub them all over their body <laughs> right <laughs> and then when when you look at, when you look at the lemurs afterwards you tell me that this guy's not baked <laughs> <laughs> they're doing it to get high <laughs> they're they doing, yeah, they get, get doing it to get high no way um, so yeah <laughs> Um, yeah, so the, the lemurs pick up the <laughs> pick up the millipedes <laughs> and use the millipedes to get high. <laughs> nah, nah. <laughs> Chelo, more from Joan Singh Ji's high lemurs next week. <laughs> But thank you guys. Uh, it's been a really good, uh, really good podcast. Really good coming back, um, fully charged. Ask me next week how I feel. I'll probably feel like rubbish. but i wanted to take this team much time out to thank everyone who has listened and gotten this far through the podcast thank you for showing your love and support really appreciate that